Hello everyone, welcome to the Jargus Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 15th episode of Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel Tech Support. Now we begin with a girl from Summer Cove High whose name is Emma. She's extremely good with computers and programming, and she compiles all the school's databases into an easy-to-use system that both the secretary and Principal Hastings can use easily. But Victor, Vincent, and Monty want a piece of it action because there's gonna be a trophy for Technology Week. So of course they want to figure something out by the next day. And you can tell even the characters are tired of their shenanigans because Principal Hastings just gets annoyed. She just knows they're gonna do something stupid and destructive. But she still has to give them their fair shot. <laughs> So the first idea is that they invent a tiny little robot that can go on the pool table and automatically make shots, thinking it can play the perfect game. It seems to move well at first, but then it starts hitting all the balls too fast and they just fly everywhere and hit people in faces, getting people's food. It, it just doesn't work out for anybody. So they decide they'll figure something out after they eat, but they take one bite of the sandwiches and they spit it out because it tastes disgusting. Disgusting. With Monty saying that even a robot with no taste buds could do something better than that. And Victor gets the idea for a robot chef. But we'll get back to that idea in a little while. The important part of the episode starts with Brody giving Emma some karate lesson. And by karate it means teaching her techniques with a wooden sword. She even helps fix up his uh, smartphone. She even helps fix up his smartphone as a uh, thank you for helping out with her lessons. But as they are leaving, our new monster, Typeface, who is just a giant walking keyboard, mind you, comes and attacks. Brody, of course, sends her running, and he morphs and fights him. Now, strangely enough, the rangers quickly show up, but Typeface says he's got all six. But we don't see all six until right after he says that unless he can tell they're coming somehow. And when the Red Ranger's backup does arrive, Typeface calls upon some basher bots to come and assist him. And amidst this fighting, Emma comes back. She wants to be like a Power Ranger as well and tries to help them. So she runs at them with her wooden sword and she swipes it at a basher bot right after it got blasted in the back by the Rangers. So when it falls, she thinks she destroys it. And it happens again to another one Calvin was fighting. She thinks she dealt the finishing blow. And then once more, she knocks over some debris for a couple that were already injured. So Typeface, being outnumbered from that, runs away. And so does she, because she's late for something. Now, so while this first battle ended with neither side having any sort of advantage, really, Emma's getting a little big head, because someone found a recording of the fight in a way that makes her look competent, apparently. I don't think we ever get to see that footage. And she goes up to Brody and says that she don't need her ninja lessons anymore. Say what? First it was karate, now it's ninja lessons? Make up your mind, script. <laughs> so they're worried that she's going to put herself in real danger next time. And we do not have to wait long for that, because soon, typeface returns. And this time, Badana is helping him. And, and I believe this is the first time we actually see Badana fight. And she is very skilled. I mean, she's able to brush off the ranger's attacks, and is even able to, one by one, put him in a corner. And just when she's about to do a blast to do serious damage against them, Emma shows up and tries to fight. And her wooden sword gets singed and broken in half by Madonna's blast. <laughs> to which she finally realizes, oh crap, I'm outpowered. I'm in harm's way. But the rangers quickly get her to run away and go to safety, and they outmaneuver Badana, who runs away. I'll talk about her in a little bit. Meanwhile, Preston is dealing with Typeface, and his sword gets grabbed, and apparently he's able to infect it with some sort of computer virus that affects all the other rangers' as weapons, because even though they have the morphing grid, it still has a lot of technology based in. And Sarah says that she don't know squat about computer or dealing with viruses, which of all the engineering skills she's had, I mean, she's able to make a clone machine, and it able to make a virus to take it out when it starts going wrong. How could they forget this? Because most of the episodes for Ninja Steel have the same writers. They should have had that one figured out already. But the Rangers approach Emma, who's kind of bummed about realizing her own incompetence, and they approach her as the Rangers, not as their civilian selves. 
and she gets told that they need her expertise to fix the problem. And so to hide that the base is in the school, they blindfold her and Calvin drives her in, in circles. So to hide that the base is in the school, she gets blindfolded and Calvin rides her in circles <laughs> on his cycle. How she don't realize that? Who knows? I guess she's so excited to really be helping the rangers that she don't notice. <laughs> so Mick hides in the base because she's one of his students. You don't want that secret getting out. And the first thing she does when the blindfold is, is off is shake Redbot's hand. Yes, remember when he had his blog when we're dealing with the Gold Ranger? Well, she read it and she was a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so now to help bring each of the systems back online, she unrolls a collection of flash drives because of course the highly advanced alien mystical powered computer system runs off a of USB data input. <laughs> they have all sorts of programs on it and she just starts hitting buttons to try and get their stuff back online. But alas, they can't just wait around for it to finish because typeface returns. So the rangers fight him. They can use the swords but none of the special abilities or the ninja stars or even the special abilities from their blasters. The power just does not come out. So I guess you could say that his virus blocked off their weapon's connection to the morphing grid to some degree, instead of outright, you know, <laughs> disabling them. I know, enough getting nitpicking to the Power Rangers lore. This doesn't last long because she does get their systems back, and they combine their blasters to take him down. And really, he hardly has the opportunity to show he has an advantage, because Emma fixes it right away. So the Rangers just finish him off. Now I gotta say, the Maze of Battle is a bit unique, because he can use a space key to move in space. Or in other words, he can teleport all around. So to combat this, they get the Astro Resort to grab him from behind and toss him into the air. To which they use the Blaze Fires Megazords to just use the Ranger Blast on him. But this time it's pretty cool because they attack it in midair and he falls to the ground and explodes. That was a much better use of this finishing blow than we've seen since it was introduced. I really like seeing that. And it's a bit of a creative way to finish a Megazord battle in the middle of the air instead of just, you know, regularly using it on the ground. So I do like that. I like that a lot. Now, back at school, Emma realizes that she could use some more lessons and really gladly accepts her back as a student. But alas, we're not done yet, because now we have... Victor, Vincent, and Monty trying to grab the trophy at the last minute. They invented the Victor Maddox Snack Maddox. I think that's what he calls it. It's something very similar to that if I'm wrong. Which is a very ingenious device because it can make pizza, spaghetti, ice cream, a lot of different foods just at the push of a button. It's like, it's like he stole the idea from Sarah's cooking machine back in the first half of Ninja Steel. Or maybe that microwave device from the Astro Mega ship on In Space perhaps. Unfortunately, Monty Monty hasn't figured out all the kinks in the system, and Victor tries to get it to do too much at once, and so it starts making food, but then it starts spitting out and throwing it everywhere. So it doesn't quite work out. And Hastings is just entirely irritated, and she announces Emma as the winner and just walks off. <laughs> so I have to say, this was a pretty fun episode. I mean, Emma was a really nice character. I mean, she's really nice, enthusiastic. She wasn't negative at all. She was a lot of fun. <laughs> Now, as someone with her level of intelligence, I would have expected her to notice when she was not performing well in the battle. Well, she is still a high school student, so I guess her excitement took over her reasoning a little bit. But she made up for it, and she realizes her mistake pretty quickly. So I can't say I dislike her. <laughs> now, an interesting thing about Victor and Monty this time is that, for once, everyone is visibly annoyed just by their presence. So like I was saying a few episodes ago about the character development, I wonder if this is a precursor to them changing at some point since now everyone else just doesn't want to be around them and the instant they show themselves people are already not wanting to hear what they say i really hope that's it instead of the show just making fun of the idea that they're always causing trouble it'd be great to see them just have a truly selfless moment by the series for now and who knows that may be what gives victor his 50th trophy at last the last thing i want to say is about badana she really hasn't done much this season but here she's actually being competent. She does a lot of like traditional dance moves, some sort of Japanese dance. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but she uses it with her fans to attack. And it's really effective because it takes the ranges down and it fits well with the ninja theme a little bit. So I wonder if she's going to have a serious fight with the ranger or if she's going to be like Poissandra and really just be taken out with the rest of the villain. I mean, she was a prisoner on Sledge's ship, so she has to be dangerous. Speaking of which, I wonder if we're ever going to see them again 
after they got screwed over by uh, Odious. There's a few episodes left in the season, they could do something to make it happen really quickly. Now overall, this was a pretty good episode. Nothing new got revealed, except for Badana's competence in fighting. Which I think she should be competent because, like I said, she was on Sledge's ship, so she had to be dangerous for a reason to have that sort of bounty on her. But if you skip this episode, you're not missing much anything either. So it's a fun little episode that doesn't serve any purpose, but it's entertaining. And at the end of the day, you just want an entertaining episode. But it does make me worry because we only have a handful of episodes left in, and there's been no overarching plot development yet. So I hope we don't have everything rushed into the end like we had in Dino's chart. That's my biggest concern going forward. But we'll tackle it, but we'll see what comes of it next time. Until then, this has been Jargus. Thanks for watching, and until we meet again, let the power protect you. <laughs> <laughs>